But today's project is going to be, well, two parts. One is going to be doing a modify or a hack, if you will, to a Zoom R24. The hack would also work with a Zoom R16. And also for people that are into 3D printing, 3D printing new uh, faders. Uh, I've used the Zooms for probably about four years now to record all the Robot Raven demos for their albums. And there's a couple of simple things that I, I think can be changed and I'm going to try to do them all on this one. I never really needed it to be portable unit, it was just very cost efficient for what it could do. One of the first problems that I've always had with the uh, zooms before we get into the mod is actually came down to just where the power cord plugs in. The jack that's there only has one contact on the negative barrel part so if the jack gets moved side to side, which happens anytime the thing's laying on a table and you're pulling on cables and moving things around, the power supply cuts out and doesn't power the unit. Well, there are batteries in the unit, and when the power cuts out, the batteries immediately take in, so nothing stops. There's no indication that anything is wrong, except there is a little, little teeny bitty battery thing that you can see up on the screen if you happen to look for it. But you're not going to be looking for it because you're recording a job. So what happens is eventually the batteries go dead, and when the batteries go dead, the zooms always freak out, and then that just corrupts the uh, SD card, and you hear a large static buzzing sound that pretty much destroys anything that's ever been saved on the card. So. One of the first things uh, I'll plan to do on this uh, setup is I will hardwire in place of that jack the power adapter so that there's nothing to be unplugged and in fact coming out of this whole wood console that everything's mounted in I will just have a regular grounded extension cord and the reason I'm going with a grounded extension cord even though the adapters for the zooms are ungrounded is because that's the next big problem if you're doing any direct line recording with instruments like a Strat that's a single coil pickup and there may happen to be things on the same power line in the same building you're in that cause buzz like light dimmers or any electronic heater controls that buzz is going to come through through that unless this unit's grounded so it's very easy to just add a ground in fact there's a screw in the bottom of the zooms just for adding a ground wire to them but you can also grab a ground right at the end of the power you know the wall work at the end of the power cable because one of the leads is negative and it's it's ground so you can grab that and ground at that so that's two things that have to do with the power that I'm going to fix um, one of the next things that uh, they work great the faders but one of the bigger problems in trying to do a mix is you've got this itty bitty throw I mean it's less than two inches and you can break that into millimeters if that's the part of the world that you're living in and it's really tough to get any sort of finite mix now there are um, 128 digital steps in this this all these fader pots here are actual pots and they're basically a voltage divider the, the wiper swings from ground here up to about 3.2 volts there and then that goes into the DSP chip and the reason I know how many steps there are is because if you look at the little screen and you see right there, this is all the way up, 127. You're all the way down to zero, so that means there's 128 steps. And your 100% mark is the 0 dB unity point. Anyway, those being short throws, it's really hard to get any sort of uh, quality mix. So I've always thought I would hack in and just put in some long slide pots. And then when I got to, to thinking about it, knowing, you know, I've got 3D printers and I crank out all kinds of projects, why not crank out some vintage style um, faders, like the, like the old equipment that the Beatles used to use back in the 60s. I always liked the way they looked, but also there's one nice thing about uh, the faders that work on a curve like this, is you can get a longer throw in a shorter area. So this would be the equivalent of about a five and a half inch long fader, which is a, you know, more than twice as long as those. It's going to be a lot easier to get an exact placement of exact control. This white piece of paper represents uh, a piece of paper that in the end, once this whole thing is wired up, I will put calibration marks on there. I think on one side over here probably. I'll do the the 0 through 127 calibration 
and then on this side over here I'll go ahead and do the DV calibration because even though these pots are linear and the number change count to the DSB chip is linear inside the DSB chip they change it to a, an audio taper and that's why from the 100% which is way up here almost at the top to here you have 12 dB again and yet from here to here you have less so it's the audio taper happens in the DSB so um, right now I just hacked together this case as you can see it's still winter outside it's still very cold and that's my shop out there I hate working in the cold but I knocked this case together out of scrap wood that was laying out in the carport and that means working in the shop in the cold because you have to cut and glue and paint so it isn't a very attractive case but it'll, it it gets the form and idea that I wanted to do and it's going to hold everything together so the the next step to this whole process is going to be actually going into the zoom uh, disabling or removing the original faders bringing wires out to the new faders and see if I can get that much working uh, if it all works I'll put the files up on Thingiverse for any of you guys that may want to print these but uh, basically you have a main body part oh and this ridge here is for where you're, where you're going to lay your masking tape so you can write what each channel is down and then you pull the tape up for your next project. Um, as you can see there is a main body part and this prints on the bed sitting this way no supports and then there's this lever gear and a knob and then a small gear which fits the pot and these pots I bought from all electronics they're, they're very inexpensive and uh, you got your tricolor lead which is like the LED they have up here which depending on what you're doing it changes colors on the zoom for example this channel was recording so that's red but if you weren't you could have green you know and if it's off it's off I wanted to bring all that information down directly to these channels so I'll be wiring the, that in in place then I went ahead and put in these small tactile switches uh, in case I wanted to bring the button assign control stuff to the fader too I may or may not um, all of this was designed um, in Design Spark Mechanical and originally I'd laid it out for a very large old style American pots but when I finally decided to go with the ones from all electronics they have a a different shaft size and a different mounting hole size and so had to re go in and change that but the point is it can be changed over and over again oh and one of the reasons that you can print this whole thing in this position like this even though there's a hole without any supports in this this is printed open is most printers can can scan across something as long as there's no opening in it so I put in a, a very thin layer there of plastic like I can't remember if I had it do one or two passes but uh, very thin and so when it's done you can just go in there with the exacto blade and cut that out real easy and that way you don't need supports and again you can span that no supports so that's the idea for this initial first part if I can get that waiting for the wire to come and waiting for the screws to come that's going to screw this down if all that stuff arrives I'll wire it all together and see if it works and if it does work without totaling the zoom then what I would like to do one day would be to uh, print in my case I have a 24 track print 16 more sets of these probably build an outboard box to sit along this maybe leave this box the way it is put an umbilical between them and uh, see if I can possibly get it I those of the you that use a zoom you'll know what I'm talking about and those of you that don't this is gonna mean probably absolutely nothing but the way they get 24 banks with only eight channel controls is you have 24 channels with only eight channel controls is by using three different banks when you're in bank one this is like one through eight and if you push this button and you're in bank two then your channel is nine through sixteen and push this one your channels 17 through 24 so the same controls can do different things that's great except for when it comes to mix down time if you're doing the mix down old school live moving them as the masters playing you 
it can get very confusing when you're going from bank to bank. If in, in bank one, let's say this is my kick drum and I, I need it to be there, but in bank two, maybe this is my bass guitar and it's maybe it's some other point. But as the mix is going along, there's a place where I really want to pump it. The problem is, is if where that fader was when you went from one channel to the other, the zoom doesn't update it till it notices a, a change in that voltage. So if it was already up here, but the bass was down here and you went to move it, it's going to automatically hop. It gets very uh, confusing when you can't visually see where something was to make a change. So my thought is, if you go ahead and print all, in my case, all 24 faders, and then if you can pull out the information of the 1, 2, and 3, I can do like some analog switching, analog to digital switching, and analog voltage. So maybe use 4016s or 4066 uh, hex quad chips or something. And uh, it's a quad bilateral chip. And just switch the information from the faders so it matches with what buttons you're on. I still wouldn't be able to just run up and grab any fader and move it. I would still have to know that I'm in the correct bank. But the point is that all of these so-called faders in the different banks would all be in their position. When you would go to that bank, everything would be exactly where it was. So if you wanted to move the basic guitar, you go, ah, oh, that's where it was. I wanted to bring it. I'll move it to here. It would remove a lot of the confusion. And the only problem I can see with doing that <clears throat> is that the LED information in a zoom is multiplexed. I can't just grab, say, the information off this LED and this LED and this LED to turn my quad bilateral chips on and off uh, because these aren't just on and off. It, they're, it's multiplexed. So I will have to do some... Uh, eh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. There's a couple of ways I could do it. I could do it with some logic gates. I could do it... Um, I could use an opto isolator and then use a pulse stretcher. There's a couple of ways I could go about doing it. But anyway, that would be down the road. I don't know that I'll go that route. For one thing, it would make the, the whole thing very large. Which again, if I had a bigger room, I wouldn't care. <laughs> um, and right now, the main idea is just to get more control. You know, get rid of the power problems and still keep it all one convenient little unit. So, if this is something you want to see more of, be sure to hit the like, subscribe, leave a comment. If it's something you don't want to see anymore, then don't say anything, because I'm. if I don't get enough response, I won't do a follow-up. I mean, why waste my time and yours, right? Okay, that's it for now.